So, so what do you make of what's going on um, these days? Um, we're, in, we're in very strange times, aren't we? Uh, we are indeed, Niall. Um, I'll just say something briefly. Um, this has all been prophesied. This is, it, it sounds like a very easy answer to give you, but we, we are, are personally not surprised at what we see now because... We have been praying for this for many, many years and watching and waiting for um, the fulfillment of Our Lady's promise in Fatima. Okay. Um, uh, her prophecies that um, if Russia is not consecrated, she will spread her errors throughout the world. The good will be martyred. The Holy Father will have much to suffer. Various nations will be annihilated. And uh, these prophecies are now unfolding before us. So this is what we we are, are watching happening now. We are in these times now. And um, just before we came on, both of us were briefly watching, uh, listening to Father Isaac Mary on YouTube. He has just recently put up... Um, a talk on YouTube. He's a very good Franciscan priest in America. Okay. And he he um, he he explains because many people have been writing to him or ringing him up, and they're very frightened over America with things the way things are happening so rapidly over there. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to comfort them, but he's also trying to let them see sense. Uh, why are you all so surprised now with all of this happening? He's saying to them. Um, because this this has had to come because, you know, America and the rest of the world have killed God. Yeah. Um, we have we have killed millions and millions and millions of our children. How can the wrath of God not come down upon us? Um, so why are we so surprised now? Like. Um, but then he doesn't keep it all like negative. He's trying to come encourage people. Please, please turn to Our Lady. She is our, she is the answer now. Turn to Our Lady, and 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 pray to her, and she will give you, she will give you encouragement and and strength to cope. And be not afraid. Right. Very good. Um. To be honest, I have I've never listened to Father Isaac. To be um, to be honest, but maybe after the stream, I'll uh, I'll have a listen to what he has to say. Yes, yes, yes. Um, you wanted to, you gone ahead. Yes. I was just going to say you wanted to chat about the crisis in the church tonight. Yes, um, I I'll pass you on to Sister Anne Maria. Okay. She she wishes to talk about the crisis in the church. Okay. Good evening. Good evening, how are you doing? Good, thank you. Yes, yeah, so we were thinking it would be good to talk about the crisis in the church today. And as you were, you were, you were asking Mother what she thinks about what's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that a large part of it is, is connected. The, church, the crisis in the church and the crisis in the world is uh, closely connected. And just as the Freemasons are behind a lot of what is happening in the world so that they are also really at the root of the crisis in the church right okay um so it it didn't really start with vatican II. it started a long time before that uh in our first image which we sent you there uh you can see the um how how satan was rebelling and he was cast out of paradise is this the uh, is this the, the the Vatican and getting hit by lightning? Is it? All right, that that was the first one. Yes, sorry. Um, that that is to show also how the wrath of God is falling upon the Vatican because they have they have angered him by what they have done, 
um, they have departed from the truth and they are no longer holding fast to tradition, to the rock of the faith. Okay. Um, so it was very symbolic that lightning struck the Vatican. That was about the time when uh, Pope Benedict was forced out of office. And I think that was a sign from God to show his anger with what had happened. And to show also that Francis is not pleasing to him. Um so yes, in the in the second image we have the uh, when Satan was cast out of paradise, cast out of heaven. Okay, I'll get it up now. And um, ever ever since then he has made war upon upon the church, upon the people of God. He has been angry with us because we have the opportunity to gain what he lost. And all through the ages, he has tried various ways to attack the church and to turn people away from God. But largely, at the beginning at least, he used open persecutions. He used the, in the, in the Old Testament, there were the Egyptians, there were many wars, people fighting with the Israelites. In the New Testament, you had the the Roman empress persecuting the Christians until the year 300 or about then. There were many martyrs, but the more the Christians were martyred, the more the faith spread. So it wasn't until about the 1700s that Satan really began to plot to destroy the church from within. And this was, this was about the time when Freemasonry began. Um, in our third image, I believe you have an image of Voltaire. Yeah, I'll get it he, up right now. He was one of, one of the most influential people in spreading Freemasonry. He was born a Catholic and given a very Catholic education. But he soon left the church when he came into young adulthood. Um, he left the church and he became filled with hatred for it. And the Society of Freemasons, they were only newly founded and he joined them. And he was so influential, he was largely responsible for spreading it all throughout France and Europe. Um, now the plan of the Freemasons was to destroy the church from within because they knew that open persecution wouldn't be enough to destroy the church. That had been tried many times before and the more the Christians were martyred, the more the faith spread. Um, so Freemasonry really tried to do what Satan did. Satan tried to make himself like God and Freemasonry tries to make man like God, to make man his own God. Um, and reason, reason, not faith, is the goal of the Freemasons. They promote a religion of all religions, a universal brotherhood. And everybody is supposed to get on well with everybody else. These were the principles behind the French Revolution, which took place in 1789. And they are also the reason why the Freemasons stir up so many wars. And what we're seeing today, all the chaos in society, that is also due to the Freemasons. They want to create chaos um, because it is a tactic of Satan to divide and conquer. And when there is a war, people tend to be divided. 
and therefore more easily conquered. Um, have you any questions so far? Um, just one question about Voltaire. Did he, you know, did he go mad on his deathbed? There's like rumors that he. He uh... did. Yes. Yeah. That's right. The the doctor, um, he he came in, and the doctor the doctor saw him on his deathbed, and he said, "I would not like to die the way that man died." <laughs> <laughs> and that says it all. Yes. Now, some some people have pointed out that there have been many people converting to Catholicism on the deathbed, but nobody converting to atheism or Freemasonry on the deathbed. That's true. Yeah, good point. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was a now. This is a little bit off topic, but there was a comment or there was a question in the comment section there. Um, what should people do on a daily basis basis uh, fasting praying etc that comes from michael what should sorry what should people do on a daily basis fasting praying etc well we would say especially praying the daily rosary because the rosary is a very powerful weapon which has been given us by our lady um fasting is good in moderation um Keep the commandments, the commandments of the church. Uh, set aside a little time, at least, even five or ten minutes, just for uh, prayer from the heart, I would say, rather than reading from a book, to speak to God in your own words. Um, that's really what we would say to do on a daily basis. Okay. Go on ahead. Sorry? I'll continue there. You're going to say something? Yes, also, also go to confession as often as possible. Keep in the state of grace. Um, I know it's harder nowadays to find a priest willing to hear confession. But there are still priests around. It's a matter of finding them. It's true. Um, so have you got any, anything else to add there now before we continue our conversation about the church? Um, I think we were, I think we were, we were talking at here about the French Revolution. We were about to move on to Our Lady of La Salette, I think. Okay. Because she prophesied what would happen in these times. She said the church will witness a frightful crisis. And that, that's exactly what we are seeing today. She said Rome will lose her faith and will become the seat of the Antichrist. Wow. And I think this prophecy has pretty much almost been fulfilled right now before our eyes. What What was her backstory? Uh, oh. Our Lady of La Salette? Yes. Uh, she appeared in 1846 to two shepherd children, Melanie and Maximin, in France. And they saw her sitting on a rock and she was weeping. And she said, I can no longer hold back the arm of my son. Um, people, if people do not stop working on Sundays and blaspheming God, um, a worse war will break out. Uh, the, the potato, she prophesied the, the failure of the, the, the potato crop in Ireland. And this prophecy was fulfilled. Um, and she said that the, these were punishments from God because people had turned away from him. So she prophesied what would happen in these times. She said that the church would be an eclipse. And I don't know if you've heard of Archbishop Vigano, but he speaks about the church being an eclipse. Yeah. Um, he speaks about two separate churches. There is the true church, and then there is another, a deep church, he calls it, which uh, it, it resembles in, in the external things, it resembles the true church, but it is kind of overshadowing the true church, just like in an eclipse, the, 
the sun. The moon, the moon obscures the sun. Right, okay. And that's how he explains it. He's a, he's a very good speaker, very good to listen to because he can see what is happening. Does Cardinal yeah. Vigano? Archbishop Vigano. I think he's not a cardinal yet. Okay, right, Archbishop. He's in hiding. He is in hiding. He yeah, has okay. to he had to go into hiding because he exposed um he exposed uh, Macaric. Cardinal Macaric. Right, okay. Exposed the pedophile pedophile or, or the sex abuse of Cardinal Macaric. Um and, and that's uh, they, they're 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 after him. They're okay. after him. Very interesting, and just an, out of interest, what is his position on, um, I guess the SSPX and the, all all that? You know, if, if he's part of the Novus Order Church, I think uh, I think he's not he's not actually a, a part of it, but he he fully supports what Archbishop Lefebvre did. Archbishop Lefebvre he founded the Society of Saint Pius X, um, and. Archbishop Vigano was full of praise for what he did. He was one of the few who stood up at the Second Vatican Council and refused to go along with it. Okay. Very interesting indeed. Um, so uh, there's also another interesting document which was published in 1859. It's known as the Alta Vendita. Um, okay. I think that you'll see that in the next image. Okay. Um. It was it was written by Freemasons. It was a, from a high-ranking Freemason, and somehow it came into the hands of I think a Catholic priest, right. and he published it. It was a plan of the Freemasons to take over the church and to destroy it from within, and it detailed how they were how they planned to accomplish it. They planned first of all to. Uh, to get to the youth, because they were more easily influenced. Um, they would try and get, say, some people influenced with the Freemasonic ideals. They would get them into the schools to be teaching the, the young the young boys, the young seminarians even. Yeah. And they would keep up a, an outward appearance of being loyal Catholics, but really they were corrupting the young. And then... These young men, they went on to become priests, and eventually some became bishops and even cardinals. And that was the plan of the Freemasons, to get some of their highest, um, to get to get uh, some of the highest ranking men in the church influenced by Freemasonry, and therefore they would be in a better position to destroy the church. Um, and they also were responsible, I, I imagine, through through the social media, through the newspapers, for spreading a lot of scandals, scandalous stories and calumnies about priests and religious, and therefore causing many people to have a lesser regard and less, less respect for the priests and the clergy. And they succeeded... Um, in getting many of their their men into the positions of power in the church, it's rumored that uh, Pope John the Twenty Third was a Freemason himself, and even Paul the Sixth. Right. Okay. <laughs> Very interesting. <clears throat> um, I just see another um. A uh, sorry to go off on a tangent here, but another question comes in. Um, can the church come back from this and will Ireland be saved? I, I can answer that. Will mm. the church come back from this? Our Lord Jesus said, um, uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against against the Catholic Church. So, yes, of course, because our, our, our Blessed Mother also said, my Immaculate Heart will triumph. So we must believe her words that she she will bring triumph and she will she will restore the church. Um, it will not be the same as it as as it was when we were growing up. It will not be the same. It will be a small remnant. 
Okay. Similar to the early church. Um, there will be few people, but they will be very, very devout and very dedicated and love God. Okay. Now, the, the next point we were going to talk about was the, how the, uh, the Freemasons, they made use of communism to advance their ideals. And that they, it was the Freemasons who actually financed um, Karl Marx in writing his Communist Manifesto. Is this the, um, the picture of the permanent destruction of the Alta Vendetta? Is that the right one? The one next after the Alta Vendetta is Balladod. She was a communist okay. agent and she was converted to the Catholic faith by Archbishop Fulton Sheen, okay. who is another very good archbishop. He's dead now, but he was an excellent speaker. And way back, even in the 40s, he spoke about um, what would happen. He said that the Antichrist would set up a counter church, which would be the ape of the Church of God. And he said it would in all externals resemble the mystical body of Christ. And that is the that is the Vatican II now that we have today. Right, okay. That, that is the counter church. That is the deep church we have, which is Francis which is Francis Church. Um so Valadad, she was converted from communism and she she said how she herself was responsible for placing many, many of a over a thousand young men in seminaries who were influenced with communist ideals. And she said that many of them had risen to positions of power in the church. Um, four of them were already cardinals. And that was back in 1952. And in 1953, Manning Johnson, he was another communist who was converted and he, he also said that the communist policy of infiltrating seminaries um, was successful even beyond their own expectations well wow, right okay so all of this really prepared the way for the second vatican council and um that which took that took place in 1962 so Many, many of the council fathers, those who participated in it, they were already filled with the communist and the Freemasonic ideals. So it didn't take very much to um, bring it out into the open and openly propagate it. Now, Cardinal Leo Joseph Swainens, he was one of the cardinals who took place in Vatican II. And he himself called Vatican II the 1789 of the church. In other words, the revolution in the church. Parallel to the French Revolution. Right, okay. And it was the Second Vatican Council which really introduced the new theology or the new um, the new idea that man is, is the center of everything. And... That is why they changed the mass. They made it centered on man rather than on God. I think we briefly discussed that in our last talk. Um, but one, one important thing which many people don't realize is that they really deliberately formed the new mass so as to be like a Protestant mass. Um, Bugnini. He was the one who was placed in charge of forming this mass, and he had six Protestant ministers help him in forming it. Uh, I think that might be even in our last image, an image of Bugnini. Okay. Um, oh, yeah, sorry, I have it here now. And... I have a question for you. What was the role of um, uh, Malachi Martin in all this? Do you know? Um, he did. He did a great deal to expose what was going on, but he he didn't speak out as openly as, say, Archbishop Lefebvre. 
because right. he was still kind of a part of this new church, if you like, even though he didn't agree with what they were doing. He worked as an exorcist. He was an he was a secretary of, of Paul the Sixth, as far as I know, in the Vatican. Um, he was a secretary, uh, or one, or, or, or in a, a high place in the Vatican. And um, when when the changes came after Vatican II, he he asked to be suspended. He I think he asked to be suspended, so he was given suspension, which which I think is, he went back to America then, and uh, he carried on secretly as a priest, uh, quietly, um, you know, as a priest, but privately, because he was still doing the traditional mass while the new mass was going on. And he, he spent a great deal of time, he was an exorcist, a very, very busy one. And um, he spent a great deal of time writing books, but in a fictional type of way that um, you could, you could, you, you know, which based on truth, but so that, uh, like like our Lord's prophecies, um, were not very clear unless you could parables. Yes, yeah, his parables. Sorry, yes. So uh, I, I I don't know if I've answered that question. Oh, you um, did that absolutely. Um, as what else? Um, what other pictures have I got up here now? I've got um, Manon Johnson, the former communist. Yes. Party. Yes, we have him there after after Ballad God. Um, he was he was also, uh, converted from from communism, and he he just confirmed really what Ballad God said. Okay. Um, that they had they had been successful even beyond their own expectations. Okay, and the and then the next is I have a picture of the Second Vatican Council itself, I believe. Yes. Um, um are there any other questions from from people? Uh, let me go to the live chat really quickly here to see what everyone's saying. Um. Uh, so there's a one person says so stop going to the Protestant mass folks and find traditional church yes um, that's what we would highly recommend because it really is no longer a Catholic mass it's it was made to please the Protestants and if you supposing you were to go into a Lutheran church this the service there would not look any different from what you would see in a modern church. It really is a Protestant service and not the true Catholic Mass. Right. So we would highly recommend to find a Latin Mass wherever you can, even if it means driving for, say, an hour. It would be better not to attend the new Mass at all if you can't get to any, um, than to participate in a Protestant service. All right. Um, I'm looking for more questions here in the live chat for you. Um, there was one there. Um, um, one question comes in from Fanula. Will Our Lady ever visit in the form of an apparition to children again? Well, that's not for us to say, really. Yeah, it's not for us to say, is it? <laughs> so, <laughs> there for no We don't know the future. We're not prophets. <laughs> You're not prophets. She has, she has, she has done a great deal of. She has has appeared a great deal over the last three hundred years, Nile, um, to warn us about these times. Um, um, she has constantly been coming from heaven with messages from us, true, true apparitions I'm talking about. And um, it wouldn't matter if she came again and again and again. People just do not listen. Yeah, they don't. It's only when the hand of God will come down, then they will say, oh, then we, we remember now. We remember now. And this is the same re history repeating itself like in the, in the time of the Israelites. It's only when God put them 
put them across his knee and smack them. And then they said, oh, we'll be good now. You will behave ourselves. And then you see, this is this has to come. She said that her, the hand of her son is too heavy now. But we mustn't lose hope. We mustn't get discouraged. Listen to Father Isaac Mary on YouTube, um, his latest one. Uh, he, he is constantly telling people not to get discouraged, but turn to Our Lady. She will give them strength and encouragement. Pray to Our Lady every day and you will, you will not be afraid. And be in the state of grace. That's the most important thing of all. Be in the state of grace and and pray your rosary every day. And you will not be afraid of what's to come. Okay, very good. So um, we're coming up to the end of the show. Um, what What's your situation like now um, down where you are, down the country? Any updates for us that you can tell? Yes, no, we we're, we're very close. Um, we're very close to signing um, for a piece of land here in County Cork. We were going to do so today, but there was a, a, a small a small piece of paperwork required. And sometime this week, we expect to be called to sign for a piece of land we are about to purchase. There is. Um, uh, there is a house on the site on the land. Unfortunately, um, we couldn't afford to purchase a good sized piece of land with a very good livable house. We had to make a decision, either a house, a good house and one acre or a large amount of land for privacy and uh, a derelict house. So we chose the land for privacy okay. and the house is very, very poor and we will need all the help we can get from anybody around the country who can come down and help us to repair. Right, well, I've linked your GoFundMe for your site and I've also linked your website if anybody with any skills that can help the sisters. You can get in contact, go onto the, the website, isn't that right? Yes, 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 yes. We, we just, we don't know, once we sign for this piece of land, we, we are, we are two women. We don't really know where to go from here. Like putting putting um, even some stones down. Where to go from here? We we need a foreman really to help us and um, organize the moving of of our garden sheds here, um, so that we can start to live on that piece of land and get working and repair this old house. So any help people can offer us, we'd be very grateful. All right, that's great. So your GoFundMe and your website links are in the description below. If anybody's any skills or you want to support the sisters, please do so. Um, so that's it for me because I, we're actually out of time here now. So sisters, thanks again for coming on. Maybe in a few weeks or a month or so, we can have you on again. Yes. God bless you. And God thank you, you. Nye. Thank you very much. No problem. God bless you. Ihawa. Ihawa. Bye. All right. Hope you enjoyed that little talk there, everybody. Let me just move the mic and then turn down this microphone. So, there we go. There we have it. That was the Carmelite nuns of the Holy Face. Hope you took something out of that and took some courage. Um, so, their GoFundMe is in the description and their website if you've got any um if you got any skills you can help them out with please contact them mm -hmm.